Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be looking at the increasingly likely cold and wintry spell uh, which is expected to impact parts of the UK and Ireland over the next week or so and then into December including the risk of some uh, snow as well which we'll get into later but starting off we're going to uh, take a look at the general weather pattern which is causing this period of cold weather and to do that we're going to look at the European model weekly mean anomalies uh, and basically this is the anomaly of the uh, average um, pressure from all the different ensemble members so just as a quick reminder you have one computer model and within that model you have around kind of depending but 30 to 50 sub models and those are the ensemble members and together they give you kind of a better picture of the overall uh, setup and you can see the pink colors on this map uh, you can see them here across parts of Iceland uh, and Greenland are above average pressure and then the blue colors across parts of Europe are signaling below average pressure and this is valid from the week starting Monday and then into the uh, first week of December. And you can see quite clearly the models are expecting uh, fairly above average um, pressure levels across uh, parts of, like I said, Greenland and Iceland, generally kind of the uh, northern areas of Europe uh, and Atlantic. And you can see then across parts of Europe, like I said, uh, we've seen below average um, pressure from the ensembles. And then in between that, uh, just as a quick reminder, by the way, the wind flows uh, anti-clockwise around low pressure and clockwise around high pressure. And so if you kind of uh, kind of inter uh, like interpret the wind from the pressure chart, you can see what that does is it, it's pulling in a northeasterly wind across the UK and Ireland. And the northeasterly direction is generally a pretty cold one uh, during the winter. So that is why we've, we're seeing this colder spell. And then just out of interest into the second week of December, you can see uh, a fairly similar pattern, uh, but slight differences. The high pressure now is kind of moving slightly to the uh, east into parts of kind of northern Europe there with the low pressure across the Atlantic, uh, which then is also a potentially interesting setup because you may be seeing more lows kind of this way. And then still we're kind of pulling in a northeasterly general wind, uh, so cold air with possibly the hints of lows bringing the chance of some snow. So now getting into the details uh, a bit more, we've been talking about this for quite a while now. Uh, initially, we had a kind of push of cold air expected to come in across parts of eastern areas of the UK. And this has now occurred. That's why we're seeing colder weather across much of England, uh, northern England, Scotland uh, today. It's going to get a little less cold into the weekend, as you can see on the 850 hectopascal temperature chart. And this is kind of a chart we use to show the general air mass. Uh, and it is the temperature around a mile above the ground. But you can see here the temperatures are pretty chilly uh, through today and tomorrow but then we start to get this low moving across the uh, UK as you can see here that's the kind of little uh, circle of isobars um, and you can see if I use the overview chart there's our little low there with kind of areas of showery rain and this is going to be quite an important feature because as it slips to the southeast into Europe it then drags in cold air on the northeast side and we have high pressure setting up to the north of us. Uh, this is all within the range that we have a uh, fairly good confidence now. So a video, the, the last video I did, which I think was on Tuesday, I said there's too much uncertainty right now around this kind of evolution. We do have fairly strong confidence on what will happen to this low now. Uh, and as you can see, the models do agree. If I just quickly show you the uh, GFS compared to this, you can see GFS showing the same thing, icons all showing the same thing. Back to the European, you can see we're expected to have this low now to the southeast of the UK, and then that is dragging in a cold uh, northeasterly flow um, on the northern side of the low. And initially, it's not going to be too cold, as you can see here, which kind of got those lighter blue colours showing uh, nothing exceptional, but is a chilly air mass. But the main interest in this is because look what is all lying to our northeast. We've got those dark blue and purple colours, and as that low continues to move to the southeast we're going to continue to see that cold air being transported uh, towards the uk uh, as you can see so by tuesday we're now going to have another cold air mass um, into parts of the uk and parts of ireland just about as well so kind of we're going from chilly uh, saturday sunday mild with rain on monday and then back into tuesday we're back to those colder temperatures um, as you can see here and then this is where the uncertainty starts to increase again, because by Tuesday and Wednesday, we have this little uh, low right here. You can see kind of a small feature, but notice that it kind of moves around in quite a kind of unusual way. It's kind of 
doing a, if you like, kind of a dance with this other low pressure system, kind of moving around uh, in fairly, like I said, unusual way. It's also just kind of strengthening, and it's also quite small. And automatically, uh, when we've got a very small lows uh, in kind of close proximity to other lows, this often creates a lot of uncertainty because we don't quite know the exact strength, the exact track. And in this kind of scenario where we have um, cold or kind of mild air on the southern side, milder, and then cold or colder air on the northern side, this can have a fairly big difference on the uh, weather forecast because if it tracks more to the north, then you're going to have uh, Ireland and parts of England and Wales under the kind of more mild air. And then if it tracks further south, you can have all of the UK and Ireland under the cold air. And so this is where the first big uncertainty including with a snow risk starts to emerge because if i show you for example the european model uh, what this does is it brings the low uh, nice and kind of cleanly to the south into parts of france there and then it leaves a very cold northeasterly flow across almost all of the uk um, on the kind of northern side and that's by friday uh, and then if i compare that to the gfs model for example you can see what this does uh, you can see the differences there is it intensifies it a bit early uh, kind of to the northwest uh, of the UK right there and then also it doesn't go as far south it kind of hangs around it kind of spins does a few loops as you can see there and we end up with a kind of slightly less cold it still will be chilly but less cold air across most of uh, England Wales and Ireland and then the cold air is also it's less cold across the northern areas but also uh, the northern areas of the kind of only reasons seeing the proper cold and then you can see it doesn't quite actually ever get as cold on this particular run so that is one of the biggest uncertainties at this time uh, but to kind of take a look at an average because like i said the averages kind of give you a broader sense of the uh, general pattern you can see the average uh, shows the low to be uh, somewhere basically within this circle this is where the mean is from the gfs i'll show you the uh, european in a second and you can see the general setup uh, like I mentioned, is we're going to have the cold air on the north side of this low, and then the less cold air to the south. But in terms of exact positioning, it's very uncertain. And to illustrate that, we're going to use this uh, Dalmatian chart from the European model. And each of these uh, kind of ignore everything out here and out here. Focus on kind of the UK, uh, as with the, obviously we're doing the forecast for the UK. But this is what you want to focus on. Each of these little purple dots is the different positions of the low on each of the ensemble members. So this is giving you quite a good illustration that there's a lot of spread uh, within the ensemble members of where that low is going to be. The kind of operational runs have it somewhere in here, but the other runs have it varying all the way from being kind of south across Ireland to kind of north near Scotland. And then if we run that uh, through, you can see there is a general consensus for it to remain south of the UK here, at least from the European model, um, but there is still a lot of spread in that it could be, uh, as you can see, basically anywhere within this kind of cluster of dots. So there is quite a lot of uncertainty about this low pressure system, uh, this low, yeah, this low in particular, also because it could bring the first snow risk. Now, it is very early uh, to talk about snow. I usually don't like to talk about um, specifics at least until within a couple of days. But when you do have a low pressure system, you have rising air. Rising air leads to precipitation. And when you've got precipitation in cold air, that can cause snow. So there is the risk that kind of towards the end of the week, we see our first chances of snow. The risk will be higher across um, uh, across higher ground because if the GFS is correct then what's going to happen is the air will not be as cold uh, where the actual precipitation is as you can see here we're generally looking for those negative five values for kind of snowy uh, snow conducive air but if you take a look at the European model you can see rather interestingly we do have um, a, a kind of better alignment so that we do have some precipitation bumping into cold air uh, on these uh, kind of across parts of England and please don't take this one uh, kind of literally this is just one illustration of what could happen and it's just an illustration that uh, Thursday into Friday as a low pressure system moves towards cold air there is the first chance of seeing some snow especially across hills lower levels is more uncertain that's something to bear in mind uh, of course as we go into the next week and then kind of from Friday onwards the uncertainty starts to kind of increase further the European model keeps high pressure uh, to our north here as you can see uh, with kind of the Atlantic 
quite blocked really so low pressure not really an influence into the beginning of December and even we have some kind of features like this low which would bring some significant snow if they were to occur but this is way too early to talk about actual snow so don't take any of this um, too seriously but uh, the kind of summary of the European is that it does keep us in cold air all the way into the end of the run there uh, as you can see those dark blue and purple colours with a nice northeasterly. so this is definitely a good one for the um, winter fans and taking a look at the ensemble you can see it does have pretty good ensemble support the lines are fairly close together uh, indicating that you know, there's not too much spread within the different possible solutions and at least until the 4th of December you can see there that we are looking likely, by the way this is for London, uh, we're looking likely to see cold weather and then probably from the 6th of December onwards we're going to start to see uncertainty increasing as you can see there a lot more spread and my bet would be by the kind of 8th, 9th of December we're going to see something a bit milder, possibly not for long but that is probably going to happen at some point. In contrast to the GFS you can see um, the GFS is more uncertain there uh, because of that kind of low pressure I mentioned with the possibility of milder air into southern areas during kind of the uh, end of November and into December with that low moving through. Um, because the European has better um, kind of confidence on it I'm leaning towards the European model and also because I've, I feel like the GFS can sometimes overdevelop these sort of low pressure systems uh, like that. I don't know if necessarily this very weak, weak, sorry, very weak low would in real life deepen this much uh, as it does here uh, on this particular run and so I'm leaning towards more of a European model solution but still there is uncertainty and the my opinion more likely scenario is this kind of colder one uh, with a slightly higher snow risk but uh, the other one is still on the table so that's something to bear in mind um, probably kind of going towards the end of the video here but as a summary increasing cold risk the cold looks likely the snow is still uncertain uh, and I will keep you updated on any risk over the next few days or so but thank you so much for watching everyone and have a great weekend